Hello. Hello, my sugar baby sluts. Welcome back to another episode of Gina is a Banff. Now, I got good news and I got bad news. Bad news is we're on our last dysfunctional couple from the trash reality show, Marrying Millions. The good news is it's gonna be gold because you know your girl saved the best for last. So strap in, folks. No need for an insulin shot with this Splenda couple. Let's do it. I'm Kate. I'm 34 years old, and I'm from Palm Desert, California. Sit. Sit. Gabriel. Good boy. I grew up right outside of San Diego. We didn't have a lot of money, and the town I grew up in, it was pretty rural. From the time I was a little kid, I always just loved animals. I'm getting a cookie with or without you. Imagine being so painfully generic that your intro on your own reality show is baby talking to your dog. You have 30 seconds to grab the audience's attention and sell yourself. And this is what you go with? Okay, sit. I'll stay. I'm gonna get a cookie. I'm gonna get a, you want a cookie? I even like love the idea of bringing in like rescue animals, but my apartment is definitely not big enough. <laughs> <laughs> Kate has this tick where she forcefully laughs after almost every basic thing she says, probably in an attempt to seem fun loving and carefree and silly. But she, she has the personality of a stick. I'm currently living with my very good friend, Iday, and I love living with her. So because of this, Lifetime fabricates all of these meetings with her and her friends that don't really add anything to the storyline. It's just really redundant pieces of information just to somehow achieve a minuscule drop of substance from this poor, poor girl. Are you going to church this weekend? We got a wholesome Christian girl. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up going to church and my faith is very important to me. We share that and that's really important to both of us. You know, we heard you the first time. Hoping that very, very soon my future roommate will be my husband. I hope that will be Sean. So basically her entire personality revolves around how much she loves her dog and going to church. I don't think Kate and I would uh, be the bestest of friends. <laughs> I'm Sean, I'm 29, and I live in Palm Springs, California. I'm a businessman, entrepreneur. I've always been interested in, you know, entertainment and business. When I was in high school, I started booking artists and celebrities for events and throwing events myself. From there, I just started my next company and my next company and my next company. First, I started driving for Uber and then Lyft, too. And then on the side, I was selling Herbalife to fat chicks on Instagram. But I don't have to really convince you guys that Sean's a phony because his business associate literally says it. You know, I'm in stealth. Mode. You're always in stealth mode. Always, man. I, I like to creep up on people. It's fun being in the millions at this age, but it's even better when you can get to the billions. That's my goal for the 30s. Aw, Sean, you silly boy. That decimal in your bank account balance represents cents, not dollars. You don't have one million, three hundred thousand, four hundred and twenty dollars. It's one thousand, three hundred dollars and forty two cents, okay? Some of the perks of being young and successful is I can do whatever I want, buy whatever I want. I'll buy a brand new Mercedes. That's a CLA 250, the lowest class Mercedes that goes for about uh, 35K brand new fully loaded. So I'll buy a brand new Maserati. That's an Aston Martin. Splenda starts with sugar, tastes like sugar, but it's not sugar. I live in a beautiful 5,000 square foot home in Palm Springs. With my parents. I live on a lake, so it's nice being able to just come in my house, walk to the backyard, get on my boat. What kind of Fisher Price shit is that? I met Kate at a conference in Palm Springs where I was booked to speak on a panel and she was in the first row and there was a lot of people there and you seemed really busy and I just didn't think you would really notice me but I'm glad you did. I noticed. Is there an echo in here? You're so busy. What are you trying to choke out your girlfriend? Shh, just stop talking. Shh, okay. Okay. All right. In my line of work, you, you definitely meet a lot of gold diggers. Don't worry, Sean. You first have to have gold for them to dig. That's how that works. Almost all of my friends either already have kids, are married, are engaged, or they're getting married. <laughs> so, uh -huh. That makes me feel like it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can be your plus one. Hey. Yes. We can get some practice. Some practice? <laughs> some inspiration? Yeah, inspiration, yeah. Me and my hot second cousin have more sexual tension than these two. Because Sean and I share the same faith, we won't live together before marriage. What about sex before marriage? Um, 
No. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, Kate, for being celibate, you sure act like you got the personality fucked right out of you. I love Kate, but there's definitely a lot of things I want to accomplish. We all got to move at a pace we feel comfortable with. I'm just really excited for my friends, and I'm just so happy that that's happening for them. Yeah. And this little French bulldog probably had a deeper conversation with the squirrel on his morning walk. Time for pointless friend meeting number two. Mariah is one of my very good friends. They actually sing on the worship team together. You know what they say. The the bigger the hoop, the bigger the wholesomeness of a godly woman. I do have some concerns that maybe Sean and I are not in the exact same timeline. I really don't want to be that person that's like, look, we've been together a year. Are you marrying me or not? We have something really, really special, and so I don't want to lose that. What is that something special? Please, tell me. Because neither of you have brain cells, so you can't have in-depth, life-changing conversations. You can't have sex. Homeboy can't even hug her properly. What is that something special? Please give me something, I beg of you. I really think Sean is the one, and I definitely think he's worth waiting for. I'm gonna try and just like be patient and... Yeah. Yeah. So Sean performs at a New Year's Eve party because if you couldn't tell by all the gold chains, he's obviously a rapper. I have my business side, and then I have, you know, my music career. Uber driver by day, SoundCloud rapper by night. I'm like Jay-Z, he's multidimensional, and I think I am too. Sean, do not compare yourself to Jay. That is insulting. I've been able to work with some really cool artists like John Legend, Snoop Dogg. What do you and Snoop Dogg rap about? Celibacy? <laughs> it's my, you know, true love, besides Kate. Oh, I really felt that right here. It sounded as genuine as Sean's eye color. Don't choke her out in public. Do not choke her out in public. Let's go! You want to make it exciting for the crowd. So I'm The only thing faker than Kate's celibacy and Sean's eye color is this right here. Brought a cash gun with me, which shoots out money. Doesn't take much to get the crowd hype. Crowd. I've attended bar mitzvahs that are more popping than this party. I'm trying to get these pencils like a Mexican. All day, all day, now I want it like two day, two day. Hey, we gonna get it. You think people are there for your Monopoly money, Sean? No, they're there to see some titties. And now, some deep thoughts with Kate. Just super chill, and then all of a sudden, bam, bam. <laughs> It's just like, whoa. If she sucked my dick, would she still be just as annoying? He just performed, so he's gonna go around and talk to people. But when I see him talking to girls, it's a weird feeling. So like when you have performances, you always like like talk to other girls or like hang out. There's like a lot of girls in there and I mean I'm sure like a lot of them would like love to be with like someone like you, you know what I mean? All that was was just, you know, talking to fans, that's it. Kate, it's not a hand job, it's called networking, okay? This is business. Now it's time for Kate's third friend meeting, and Lifetime was probably so relieved to film someone with more than three brain cells. I haven't seen Miriam since Sean's New Year's Eve show. Just that whole money gun deal threw me off. Did you get real bad? Yeah, I did. I caught a couple real ones. I think they were real. Like, they had the old creepy man wearing the shower cap on them. That's how you know. You always have to look for the old creepy man. How did they make? all of his money exactly we'll get you there does like a lot of stuff with business like entrepreneurial stuff <laughs> Did Lifetime really let her say that? Oh, it's so bad. He started multiple companies. You can't go on a show and be this dumb and just not expect to be made fun of. Do you know any of the companies? Like big companies? I think they're like startup no. companies. Yeah, like I heard him say that one time. Like I think it means when you start the company. Aw, yeah. yeah. did they coordinate outfits? That is so cute. So what was the deal you were talking about just now? It's basically one of my clients, you know? 
I want to do some more business. That's exciting. Oh my god, like business stuff, like synergy, because I love kombucha. Stand on the grind, you know. Sean, the only thing grinding in your life are your teeth at night from all the stress and anxiety of being exposed as a phony. I met with Miriam. Mm -hmm. She had some comments about New Year's, the like whole money gun thing. She was saying like, I didn't get real money. So I supplemented it a little bit with toy money. So she probably grabbed those few bills and was like, oh, it's all fake. But you, you got real money. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the ones with the creepy old man. Miriam makes assumptions about me and, you know, my money because she's jealous. She's a hater. She's jealous of this grind. I think when you're successful, you have a lot of targets on your back. Oh, is that why you're always wearing camo? A lot of people, you know, hate or want to poke holes for whatever reason. They can have their opinion. I'm going to do me. You got inhaled good shit and exhaled bullshit. It's one of my favorite quotes. I'm gonna post that on Instagram right now. For me, at the end of the day, how much money he has or doesn't have, that doesn't mean anything to me. Well, that's good because he doesn't have any. I work 24 7, 365, and sometimes it's nice to reward Sean, you know, with something. I'd rather hustle 24 7 than slave 9 to 5. I really hope Sean wears a mouth guard because you could just really wear those puppies down at night. Then maybe it's time for me to swap out the benzo. Benzos? All right, Kate, I know you don't understand business, but I'm gonna make them an offer they can't refuse. You see, I'm gonna swap out my $30,000 Mercedes for a $500,000 Porsche, and I'm gonna throw some Zans into that deal. So then Sean takes Kate out for their one year anniversary. Oh, where's that $500,000 Porsche, Sean? I've been telling Sean about this restaurant for months and how bad I wanted to go here. And I know it's hard to get reservations. By the way, I looked up this restaurant on Open Table, and the day before they had 22 time slots open for Friday night. Also too, I got something for you. Oh my God. What did he buy her, an aloe plant? What is that? I know oh you like God. to wear a lot of gold, so I got it for you. Wow, that's crazy. Deep thoughts. Kate. Diamond bracelet I got for Kate set in 24 karat gold, multiple carats. 24 karat gold isn't used for jewelry. It is extremely soft. It bends and warps easily, making it a poor metal for jewelry that needs to retain its shape. Pure gold also scratches easily, meaning it doesn't take long for pure gold jewelry to become scuffed and unattractive. And it's in the five figure range. Bullshit! It's not an engagement ring, but it's close. Blend up, Danny. So then Sean takes Kate to get her ugly mustard bracelet resized. Let me take a look at it and I can size it for you. Yeah, that's right. His dumb ass takes the fake jewelry to a jeweler's with his girlfriend who doesn't know it's fake. You can't get any dumber than that. Well, I don't, you know, it's CZs, right? Cubic Perzonia. Those are kind of sometimes a little bit hard to size down. I think I can spot a fake diamond at least a mile away. I've been doing this for 40 years now. But I still can't pronounce cubic zirconia correctly. Cubic Perzonia. You could pick this bracelet up online probably for 60 bucks. It's, it's not real. Oh shit, the phony has been exposed. Walk me, let's go outside. Oh look, the mustard bracelet matches her pants. First of all, she don't know what the f she talking about anyways. She'd go check the f again, first of all. What is it real or is it fake? It doesn't matter. I'm not gonna answer that. You don't think I have money? I'm, you don't I'm, know what the f I'm about. Fuck the haters. Unless the f gets, we have real problems. Tell your guys to stop filming right now. It makes me sad. I don't know. Oh, Kate. A woman of many words. She still stayed with his Splenda ass. Guys, I didn't want to talk this much shit, but these two just made it so easy. Like, I tried so hard to find some positive thing about them. Nothing. Couldn't come up with, oh, she has a cute dog. I'll give her that. He seems like a really nice boy. All right, guys, well, that's where it ends for Marrying Millions. I hope you enjoyed this series. If you stuck with me through them all, I had a really great time making them. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you next time. Bye. <laughs>